<clears throat> all right what's up everybody uh, Keith back again we're gonna do a little video on the MACD here uh, MACD indicator on how it works what it does how effective it is and um, what it's gonna take to use it and put it on a chart and compare and contrast it with whatever you would normally do so uh, let's get into it here um, essentially the MACD has a few parts MACD is an a basic indicator on charts that gives you a momentum of what's going on, what's happening, and why it's happening, kind of. And um, helps you get an overall feel for which direction it may or may not be going. All right, so there's a few parts to the MACD. Um, really not much to it. Uh, it's a really cool indicator for that reason. Um, for whatever reason, my there it goes lagging just a little bit here on my screen anyway we'll zoom in here a little bit <clears throat> the MACD has a few parts so if you're looking at it and you want to pull it up on your screen you click on indicators here you'd search I've already got it saved in my favorites but you'd search MACD MACD would pop up right here I use the basic one you can try the strategy one if you're looking at a different one that's fine but I use the basic MACD one nothing fancy about it <laughs> I have no other indicators pulled up on the chart right now, strictly just a MACD. There we go. Um, there we go. Here's a full screen version of it. I just had to get that other one off before I could do it. Alright, so the MACD has a few parts. The most important line uh, in the MACD is probably the trigger line. Um, the trigger line is the orange line, okay? Looking closely, you have two moving lines here. You have a blue line and an orange line. Okay, the blue line is the actual MACD line. And there's a technical formula to tell you what that MACD line means. I'm just going to tell you it's the faster moving line. That's the easiest way to think of it. Okay, it's the fastest moving line. The orange line is the slower moving line. Simple enough, right? Okay, so here's the parts. The blue moving line is the MACD. The most important line, though, would be the orange line, which is the trigger line. The trigger line gives you a buy or a sell or a bearish or bullish indicator on every single chart. It doesn't really matter what time frame it is, it automatically gives it to you. Um, so I'll explain it to you here. The MACD, as the chart moves along, gives you a strength index and a slow rise and a slow rise and a slow fall and a slow fall. And the blue line gives you a much more quicker version of the same thing. Buyers and sellers are moving up and down and things are happening and because it's quicker, the chart reflects that sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't, and you want to actually try to make your best in and best out on every chart. Well, you can't do that if you don't know exactly when to do it, so let me explain to you how it works. Now that you know those first two parts, the blue line is actually the MACD line, the orange line is actually the trigger line. There's some other parts, okay? You have the green down here, the, these green bars, this is called a histogram. Uh, dark green means a heavy buy volume, light green means lighter buy volume than the previous session. So if these are daily candles here, one, two, three, four, five, six, these are all green days. You see a dark green and a light green, well that means the day after wasn't quite as much buying as the day before. Okay, now this could indicate that the buyers are slowing down. This could indicate that there's more sellers than buyers that day. Could indicate multiple things. You don't really know. It's just to give you a, a, a broad view. And as you can see, each one kind of kind of does this little swoop action here. Okay, each one. Because that's a buys and sales, right? This is just momentum doing its thing. That's how it works. The next most important part of the MACD, not the histogram, is the midline, okay? I'll make that black so you can see it a little better. This midline is the difference between buys and sales, or bulls and bears, okay? Over top of the black line, we're in buy territory, bull territory, up territory. Underneath that black line, we're in sale, down, bear territory okay that's simple to understand okay the question is where would you buy and where would you sell all right well it's a little bit complicated but not too much now I'll kind of show you here on um, on the chart we got pulled up we have a crypto pulled up right now but let's just pull up um, Bank of America how about that uh, I don't even know what Bank of America is BAC. There we go. 
Again, this is the MACD for BAC. I'm on a daily chart. It's also important that you remember to be in log mode down here. You always want to be in log mode because we're trying to log trends. We're not just looking at the price. The price is actually the last thing we care about. We want to know where the trend's going, why it's going there, and how long it's going to stay there. Okay? We can't get there if we don't know what's going on first. The past tells us the future on these charts. So what we see is here, we know that over top of the MACD, over top of the midline, is bull territory, and underneath is bear. We can see that we had a lot of bear movement back here in the March area. That's when the coronavirus started. A lot of this stuff happened back here, and a big dip happened. And we see a peak up here, and we see another peak up here. And we see sometimes it just dips down a little bit underneath the midline. doesn't stay that long. Well, what does that all tell us? Well, I'll tell you now, the way the MACD works is it gives you a buy and sell on each time it gets ready to cross the midline or it's at the top or the bottom. You have three different points, the top, the bottom, and the midline. The top would give you a sale indicator. So here, where the blue MACD line crosses through the trigger line, hence why it's called the trigger line, that tells you to sell. Let's write that down. Sale indicator. Didn't spell that right, don't care. All right, then uh, down here at the bottom, there's just the obvious ones. We had one right here. The blue crossed upward. See that? Upward through the trigger line. This is a buy indicator. Now, it may seem a little confusing, but you didn't buy in the up top. You bought way down here in the bottom, in the bear area. It's almost like you're supposed to buy the bottom and sell the top. Okay, it's important to remember on every single chart. You buy the bottom, you sell the top. You don't play around in the middle. You don't buy the top. You don't sell the bottom. That's simple stuff, okay? This is why people say you buy the bottom and you sell the top, because the indicators are going to reflect that to you, okay? Now, there's some other times when the MACD gave us some signals that may have been hit or miss. Let's look at those. All right, I don't even, haven't even looked at the chart yet. I just strictly looked at the MACD. Here we had another one. And another cross right here. These are important to remember. We'll, we'll document these here. And since we're not sure about these, let's do a vertical line just to mark where we think some action may have happened. Because I want to know, I want to go back and uh, actually test this live here because I haven't even looked at Bank of America chart. Haven't bothered. Don't own any Bank of America. Don't care to. <clears throat> All right. So, again, this is the histogram telling us buys. This is the histogram telling us sales. You know, over the midline, good. Under the midline, bad. So forth, so on. It's pretty common sense to use. Now, let's apply this to our chart. All right. So, oh, we had another one back here. Let's draw this one back here too. Right there was another. All right. As you see, the Bank of America charts are a little choppy. That's why I don't particularly use too many stocks because of the choppy nature of the charts. It's kind of hard to pick up sometimes with all these gaps. Uh, these CME gaps get created because of futures trading and options trading. Opens and closes happen. Uh, and this happens a lot of times. So, um, Let's bunch this together a little bit better so we can get a better read. Alright, so here was our first buy indicator on the MACD. The blue crossed up through the orange and gave us a buy signal. Right here, at the same time, was this candle telling us to buy, okay? The MACD crossed blue to orange and started to move up. Now, there was some dips and dives here. You see this? It was, it was some price action in here. And uh, things moved around. It got a little dicey at times. Now, we can spread it out a little bit now that we've seen where we're, where we're doing our stuff at. Yeah, you, know, you had some ups and downs, you had some retracements in here, but all the while this MACD has been steadily climbing up with a gap in between the blue and the orange, nice and strong up, all right, all the way to this point where it crossed the blue down into the orange right here, we've already marked it, now sure enough, 
right here would have told us to sail. Actually, it was back a little more. Get the right spot. I don't want to cheat it. Right here. All right, the MACD told us to buy here, told us to sell here. Now, did it ever get to the point where it was a bull move? Well, the MACD. The MACD never crossed the midline, okay? It stayed down here in bearish territory this entire time. Even though this was an up move, it stayed underneath the midline. So it was in the bearish territory. All this is bearish territory down here. Never crossed. Right as it got to the midline, it gave us a dip. One last dip, and then it finally got up over, as we can see. Right here, gave us one last dip and pulled over. And this is why it's important to wait on a confirmation candle, because one, one candle can actually give you price action in one direction, and then immediately goes in the other direction. It happens all the time. So that's why we always talk about waiting for confirmation. Um, if you waited for confirmation and then waited one more candle, like you're supposed to, the very next day was a solid green pull-up. Right from that red candle was a solid green pull-up. On this MACD cross, the next day was a pull-up, which is good. And you bought down here, you were pretty much flat where you bought anyway. Um, I'll put a line right here. We bought here. That's where we bought. Pretty much flat. We didn't really lose, but like whatever, a couple bucks. And it immediately popped back over. Then, shortly after that, look at the MACD right here. We got a bull cross right here. That bull cross sent us back up. All the way to our next move, which was a bear cross. The blue went through the orange and told us to sail. Right here. In this gap. What do you know? So if we measure that, we would have, you know, we'd have bought way back here because I wouldn't have sold this one. I'd have waited because it was over. It was right here near the midline. I like to wait at the midline and see what's going to happen first. Uh, midline can often be the point of deception, and I like to wait right here. Um, we bought back here on this black line. We actually would have sold here. And we would have pulled a solid 25% off of Bank of America by using nothing but the MACD indicator. Now, could we have put in an option to sell and uh, wrote an option down on Bank of America? Absolutely. It gave us a sell signal right here. So at this very same point, I'll do a different color. I'll do uh, green. This very same point right here, when the MACD crosses ugly like this, we could have hit a sale ride all the way down here to the bottom, or a put, however you'd like to call that. If you do options on stocks, uh, a call is a buy and a put is a sell. And uh, you ride that option until you get down into the profit and then you sell it out, okay? You have a certain amount of days, a certain amount of time, whichever one you'd like to do. So from here where we sold, and all the way down to the MACD crossing, And look at that, we pulled 14%. So that was 25% there, 14% there. As we hit this sale and we crossed back into another bull move, right here, we had a bullish cross right here. It's telling us to buy. Well, what do we do? Well, we bought. Now, right here got a little tricky, see this? It almost crossed blue to orange downward again, but didn't. It held. So we just stayed in it, and it rode up. It went right through the midline, right on up into the green buy zone, into the bull zone, which is good, and carried us all the way up from yeah, right about here all the way up to the next sale, which was here. 25%, 11%, 6%. All we did was use one indicator. One indicator. This one finally turned bare. You know, blue cross down into orange. That's a sale, that's a sale signal. We can measure that from here. 
and we're still going on a sale right now. We're at 11%. You see it almost crossed right here, but it didn't. Almost crossed, but didn't. Kept going down, and it made a really nasty plunge. And now we got another 11%. We didn't use but one. We didn't use but one indicator to tell us all this. Now, obviously, I never only use one indicator. This is just to show you how the MACD works and the basics of it. Again, we have a blue line, the MACD line, the orange line, which is the trigger. Move up through the orange line on the MACD line, buy. Move down through the orange line, sell. Ride it to the midline and watch carefully. If it crosses the midline in whichever direction, stay in it. Wait for a confirmation candle if you're not exactly sure, which is just one more candle after you think you would have done something. This way it helps you be more, less emotional and more judgmental. Um, and you want as least amount of emotion as possible when doing this. Uh, the general rule of investments, I tell everyone before they ever start, no emotions. Zero emotions are allowed. There are no emotions in this game. The chart doesn't care how you feel. It's as simple as that. Okay? It's as simple as that. So don't get upset. Um, remove your emotions. This indicator can be a very good process to help you make more money along the way. And uh, when we combine it with some of the other indicators that we have, uh, it'll get even better. All right? So I'm going to put this up on YouTube for everyone to watch. Um, if you have any questions, please message me. Uh, anybody who'd like to be joining a, uh, a group full of other people, we'd be happy to uh, help you out and uh, teach you in private if you'd like, because it's all free. Everything I do is free. It's all given away. Um, all right, well, uh, well, guys, we'll see you next on the next video I do, which will be the Relative Strength Index, and uh, we'll see you guys then. Peace.